I am trying something new tonight. I have added a bunch of tape to my thumbs uh, on the idea that I want them to be tighter when I'm in my, in my backswing. Uh, I've done some research, done some looking into things, and want to sort of have the idea that... All right, I'll be around for your hand. So as I was saying before, I was interrupted by some announcements. This past week at League, I decided to make a pretty radical change by adding a bunch of tape to my thumb holes. This was prompted by coming across a video on YouTube from a bowler describing their tape application and the reasons that they make the thumb so tight. For whatever reason, this clicked with me and I chatted with some coaching resources about whether it might be a good idea for me. The main reason for this change is pretty simple. I still grab at the ball a fair bit. This makes releasing the ball consistently a challenge. Until I can get to where my grip is constant, I won't be able to make changes that add power to my game. Where I've been stuck before is thinking in terms of fit as a side to side thing. I've always had challenges with uh, thumb fit in regards to the sides of my thumb. That's where I've always had friction issues and where changes from swelling tend to manifest. So I would gotten all these thumb holes made with regards to how they fit the sides, not really thinking about how they fit front to back. I'd occasionally add a piece of tape or two to make it grippier, but never really thought about how tight it should be. But I've been thinking about it wrong forever. The front and back of your thumb are where the ball meets your thumb. It turns out that I've been ignoring what could be the most important contact point in my entire game. So I pulled out my giant roll of tape, sat down with my thumbs, and started adding tape. In the end, I think I had between five and seven pieces to most of the holes. How to work? Now let's go to the lanes. Early on, I was still really getting used to it and figuring out how this ball was going to come off my hand. First few frames, just sort of, you know, had some splits. It's going to happen. Also led to a lot of just general inconsistency early on. Yes, I know, more than usual. But I was making it up to the pocket, and you can see me having a pretty good release with the ball coming off my hand really cleanly. I think early on I wasn't quite in the right ball with the Zen. Brandon helped me get that figured out, and I switched over to the Nova and saw some pretty good results with it pretty much off the bat. But it was still a very challenging change to make it like this. And you'd see like right here, the, the thumb was still sticking and would not come on my hand completely. I have to really get a handle on the mechanics of this change and how it's gonna work for me long term. Later in the day, in game two, it does start to come together a fair bit. And I was really starting to get the hang of things. And also, my spare shooting wasn't horribly affected by it. Uh, I was still pretty good on 10 pins, but a couple sort of got tight on the thumb and, and just missed horribly. This is one where the tape was still too tight in the thumb hole, and the spare ball hadn't kept up with that one as much as the other one, and it hurt. I also had to be really careful about which ball I picked up because somebody else in the pair was throwing a Nova at the time. Got up on the approach, found out the fingers were entirely the wrong size. So that was, you know, a little awkward. I definitely had to be hyper vigilant about keeping up, on, up with the tape. My thumb is really, really sensitive to friction and humidity. But when I got it right, I had a really good looking shot. Like that one I was really, really happy with. Probably the best shot I threw all night. But overall, and into game two and game three, other than, than, you know, shockingly tapped eight pins, I was really kind of getting the handle with it. It worked really well. It's a thing I definitely think I'm gonna stick with long term, but it's gonna take some practice and getting used to things and learning, just like anything else I'm doing with this. It is a big change, just as much as shortening my slide, just as much as changing my push away, just as much as, you know, getting some of this new equipment. It's a big change in my game, but one that I think 
is going to really go long term in terms of helping me become a much, much better bowler. So it was a really strong finish tonight. I ended up shooting 200 this last game, right on the nose, which considering I had a couple of weird opens, certainly a good finish. Left me feeling really good about it. So now it's just gonna be off and getting practice and trying to make this happen consistently. I'm feeling really positive about this going forward. It's still gonna take a lot of time for me to get used to it but everything points towards it being great for me. I've just gotta learn a lot of the nuance of it, when to add or remove tape, getting it lined up correctly on my thumb on both sides, getting the right feel for exactly the fit I want, and remembering that I can let my hand relax on the ball a lot more. If I do those things, I really feel like it's gonna make my release a lot more consistent overall. And if that happens, I can start doing some more, more work on actually improving what I do with my release and get more power into my game. They'll set me up for a lot of success going forward. Speaking of success, a couple of my teammates had really great nights last week. First off, Shay, who was bowling his first league after basically learning how to bowl over the summer, had by far his best game. Before league, I suggested that he had a bit more use of his balance arm during his approach. And at the start of game two, Brandon suggested he get a little bit more aggressive with both ball speed and getting around the ball. These changes absolutely clicked, and Shea just went off, and just barely missed a 200, shooting a 199. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Shea is able to build on this going forward. Uh, rumor has it he's shopping for a spare ball. The other teammate is one you're very familiar with. Brandon, our team's best bowler, had a night to remember. Other than a bit of a gap in game two, where neither of us really sure what happened, Brandon couldn't seem to miss. He had room in both directions, had amazing carry, and shot a pair of 278 games for a 758 series. Both of those put him high for the league. Should be really cool continuing to see how he bowls over the course of the year. So that'll do it for this week's vlog. Be sure to subscribe if you want to keep up with this ongoing saga of my thumb. And as always, I welcome your comments and feedback. Thank you again for joining me here. Good luck and good bowling.